This module tells the real story of a young student transitioning to middle school after two years of homeschooling. Susie, a grade 6 student, lives with her adoptive parents and her four siblings in a warm and loving home. Susie is a bright and caring girl. However, she developed major anxiety issues because of the poor fit between her needs and her previous classroom environments. Susie was diagnosed with fetal alcohol effects at a very early age by a local pediatrician who specializes in developmental disorders. The major questions addressed in the module are, how do we ensure smooth transitioning from homeschooling to the middle school? How do we plan effective services and programming for Susie? And how do we provide Susie with the support required to be successful at school? At the beginning of this process, Susie's mom, Sheila, shared her thoughts about Susie, as well as her hopes for the upcoming school year. She loves to be around people and doing things. She's very active. Um, she likes to please people, but that's not, yeah, I mean, she doesn't always, right? But um, she's, she's not what you would call a quiet kid. If she's thinking it, it comes out. Whether you want to know it or not, she tells you what she's thinking and you just know. Um, she's fun to have around. She's loves little kids and loves to have fun. I'd love for her to socially fit in with her class, which she's found some friends there already that she's known from elementary school. Um, and I'd, I'd love for her by the end of June to be integrated into the class enough that she can go full days, um, socially keep up with the kids, and, and feel that she's doing okay. Sheila wasn't sure how to start the transitioning process. She phoned the PopFast team in June for advice. We encouraged her to contact the school principal and set up a meeting to discuss Susie's needs. The meeting occurred in August and the school's support teacher took the role of case manager. The next step was to form a multidisciplinary team that included the classroom teacher, the support teacher, the school psychologist, and the speech language pathologist. Sheila asked Susie's pediatrician to be part of the team. The pediatrician agreed. The team followed the read, interview, observe, test, or riot process to determine Susie's current level of functioning. We discovered 36 pertinent documents from the Child Development Center and the local school district. We learned that Susie is very artistic. She is often reserved and quiet in group situations. She is a hard worker and can stay focused when she knows what the expectations are. We observed that Susie is very bright and uses cues from her peers to help her figure out the task. We also discovered there was no recent assessment that would help us to determine her current level of functioning and needs. The team planned a transitioning process for Susie into her new school environment. Over several days in the month of September, Sheila and Susie visited the school parking lot. Then they went into the school, walked the hallways, and got oriented to the new environment. Then, at the beginning of October, Susie started visiting the classroom. She began by attending one hour a day, and after a few months, was attending three classes a day. While the transitioning process was happening, the needed school assessment was completed. The team discovered that her reading writing skills were at the grade 3-4 level, and her math skills were slightly lower at the grade 2-3 level. Her receptive and expressive vocabulary levels were well below average for a student in grade 6. The school psychologist and the speech-language pathologist also spent time with Susie throughout the school year doing further assessments. By working through the LEAP planning tool, the team developed some accommodations that would give Susie the greatest chance at success. As examples, we moved her desk from a central position to a place at the front of an outside row near the teacher's desk. We also made sure that a visual schedule was in a prominent location so that Susie always knew the order to the day. As well, Sheila visited the class to talk to Susie's peers about her learning strengths and needs. And we ensured that she had many opportunities to work with her classroom peers. 
Through the use of the Leak Planning Tool, Sheila was able to share some valuable insights and strategies that would help Susie's teachers. Next, the team completed the Instructional Support Planning Process Tool from the Ministry of Education. From this information, the team determined that the main areas of focus would be social-emotional, communication, and academic. All this information was used to develop Susie's individual education plan. And how did the school year go? Despite some ups and downs, Susie enjoyed a successful year. Initially, the goal was full-time attendance by the end of the year. This did not occur, but she did attend three classes a day, reading, explorations, and PE. She also attended a reading group three times a week with the support teacher. Susie developed many good friendships over the year and enjoyed her classes. At the end of the school year, the multidisciplinary team met at the pediatrician's office. The pediatrician is a specialist in developmental disorders. Susie's team shared the wide range of assessment information, reviewed her current plan, and made a new plan for full-time school attendance in the next school year. The pediatrician summarized the multidisciplinary assessment. The results of the assessment were consistent with the central nervous system impairment seen in those with FASD. Susie's needs met the Ministry of Education's requirements to receive supports and services as a Category D Physical Disabilities and Chronic Health Impairments student. More importantly, Susie is a well-accepted and contributing member of her classroom and school. With accommodations and support based on the information from the assessments, Susie has a school environment that fits her needs and utilizes her strengths.